Hello everyone, welcome back to Bat Chat. I'm Captain Logan. I'm Steve Baxter. And today we're talking about Tiger Tiger, Steve. The time has finally arrived. Oh boy, this will be fun. Are you ready, sir? Are you excited? I, I am as excited as I can be about an episode called Tiger Tiger. <laughs> uh, so, this is one of those episodes, Steve, that I I never liked. I, I had the same thing that you do. But also, weirdly, from when I was a kid, one of those that stuck with me the most, and I think because it was such a weird idea and has really strange imagery and just stuff that, like... I couldn't get it out of my head, Steve. That's fair. I had that with Red Claw to a degree, just because that episode oh, okay. was so really weird. Yeah, but I, uh, but you know, just this whole animal people thing, and it seemed even when I was a kid, it seemed to jump out of nowhere. Where I was like, I don't know why we're doing that in this show, but okay. Yeah, and then also just the image of Selena being transformed into a big cat is really all odd, and you can't get it out of your head. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and and, espe and especially because uh, it's human anatomically correct. And even as a kid, that was really weird to me. I was like, "Why is it?" And I mean, we're watching like, the nineties X Men show at the time, right? Mystique had clothes in that, so like, this is just it. It feels awkward. Yeah, yeah. And then, well, we'll talk about it anyway. Uh, everybody, if you want to watch it with us, be sure to get out your DVDs or uh, go to Amazon Prime, get it past the menus if you're watching on DVD, and get it to timestamp zero. Make sure you're watching Tiger Tiger, uh, or don't. Or don't you know, yeah. it's up to you. Uh, and if you want to just listen to this like a podcast uh, or, or just, uh, you know, watch our lovely faces, we will uh, do our level best to provide a little bit of context for what we're talking about. As we go through this one, uh, we're doing this one. Because we're doing all of them, Steve. Uh, here we go. Let's get right into it. Everybody, please press play right now. And of course, this is the episode where you need the atmosphere. <laughs> That's right, Steve. Steve. Steve has now turned has now completely turned off. Like he's he shut down. He's done. Yep. He's just like. Um... I mentioned this before we started recording, like, I'll, I'll do it here because I have nothing to say on this episode anyway. Um, if you go <laughs> in Arkham Knight to, I think it's in, in um, not the Batcave, but the, the, the abandoned film factory. Um, if you go around there, there is actually a poster that says Dr. Dorian's Island of Mutants. Oh, and weird. And it uses the silhouette with the moon, uh, where, the shot we see um, at the end of the episode where he's like standing on top of the mountain and the moon's behind him. Um, they use that really basic neat, shot. That is a neat reference, but why does somebody have reverence enough for this episode that they put that in there? I have no idea, especially considering some of the better references in that game, like Grey Ghost. Yeah. There are... Weirdly, a lot of shows seem to have this where uh, episodes that I like the least end up paving the way for major things that are done later. Uh, I don't know if this is ever explicitly stated, but I always assumed that this was the catalyst for splicing in Batman Beyond. That's a really good point. I never thought of that. Um, but it, it, it would seem just, like this is the start of that research. It's the same thing, right? Yeah, I mean, and this connects all the way back to Lightstrom. So you could say that they were very slowly building up to this. They even do stuff in Justice League that's very similar to splicing. Although, is Lightstrom evoked in this? I... I don't think he's mentioned... I don't think he is, off the top of my head. Because um, it would have been cool if they'd had uh, this guy building on his research. And oh, no, he goes to see Langstrom in the middle of the episode, doesn't he? I don't think that's Langstrom. I thought it was. Okay, we'll talk about that when we get to it, because I was watching this yesterday going, why is it that every scientist guy dealing with genetics looks just like Kirk Langstrom? Maybe so, he does like him then. Yeah, I don't remember off the top of my head. I don't think it is Langstrom. And then, of course, Langstrom is in an episode just after this. Yeah, he is. So, okay. I guess we'll have to wait and see then. Uh, or at least, again, in production order. It's sticky because they weren't aired this way. Yeah. Um, but it's still it's still uh, a neat progress. And the splicing episode of Batman Beyond is one of my favorites. 
Um, the exchanges in this episode are, are weird. Uh, a lot of just really badly written and also kind of badly performed dialogue just because yeah. a, a lot of it is difficult to perform well. There's a lot of that really awkward, like, like people interrupting people but not in a natural way kind of thing going on. Um, Selena uh, responds very strangely when a big gorilla man comes up to her. You'd think that your first response would be, Hey, you're a big gorilla man. How does that happen to you? And she's like, she's just like, no, uh, stay away from me. And uh, she she seems to not even notice that it's a big giant gorilla man. Yeah, I mean, all meanwhile, that just for the, the person... sake of preserving the shock until we see it. Yeah. Meanwhile, the guard. No, we've already seen it by the time. I mean, like it's weird. And then and then meanwhile, the guard walks up and is like, oh god, it's a giant gorilla man. So I don't know. It's, it's no, really it's, strange. It's really awkward. Um. And then just some of the animation, like it, you know those comics where there's nothing in the background when characters are speaking? Like it's yeah. just blank. That's kind of what this episode does from place to place. <laughs> it's, it's sort of irritating because it makes the episode feel more boring than it already is. And I mean, it, it has every, every potential to be really interesting. It's just, it never takes any unique route. It's really generic in every aspect. It's also and really pretty I... about some of its messages by the end. Uh, yeah, very much so, and uh, and they're 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 not. I mean, it's all stuff we've heard before, and I mean, it's it's all really uh, basic, you know, animal rights stuff, really. Yeah, and I mean that that's the issue with most of the Catwoman episodes in this series is that um, the producer from Captain Planet was on board for most of that, and so she tried. Oh, to, that's right. Try to uh, give the same sort of tone to every episode with Catwoman, and it just never worked. And all we had to do is make that character driven, and you know, have it come from a character place for her, and uh, you know, just make that her main motivation as opposed to making it a PSA for you know animal rights and environmental stuff. Yeah, I I think yeah, you know no, I mean, I mean it's, like, it's very simple to make that stuff more appealing and interesting, but they seem it's, to it's a, a purposely boring route. It's it's a it's certainly. Uh, you know, in, in, in especially right then, uh, when when people were really worried about uh, genetics and cloning and all kinds of things, um, it, it's it's a relevant thing to talk about. We need to actually talk about it and not just you know have a sermon. Yeah, and I mean, hand wave some of the more interesting questions about that, like what happens to the identities of the people that you transform, and what happens to the animals and stuff like that. Okay, so. Two questions in this scene. First of all, uh, why does the Trank gun shoot so slowly? <laughs> Good question. It's got it's got these marbles that come out, and we're acting like we're, we're like, oh, this guy's got these amazing reflexes, and you're like, no, it's just the slowest gun ever. <laughs> and secondly, why is this mad scientist Cletus Cassidy? <laughs> I never thought of that. He looks exactly like him, doesn't he? He's yeah. He looks like a twenty-year-older Cletus Cassidy, who who walks around with a cane. Yeah, that's true. It's and really I could even see this. This voice could be Cletus Cassidy. Could yeah, 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 you know, with with just you know less of an accent. Yeah, I don't actually know this voice actor from anything else. So it sounds a little yeah, bit like it. Could, as well as he could with it, but oh, it is Langstrom. Yep, yes, yeah, Langstrom. Yeah, because it mentioned Mamba. Okay, well, I, so I guess the reason it looks like Langstrom is because it's, it's Langstrom. Langstrom. <laughs> okay. Uh, I always thought Langstrom looked like uh, Norman Osborn, minus the lines across his head. Yeah, he's got that in this episode, uh, or in this animated series overall. Um, he's got I that really like that. Because I remember in, in, um, in the first episode, when we went to On Leather Wings, we had like his uncle, who was more comic book kind of tiny, cowering Langstrom. And then, so it's surprising when you see the more Norman Osborn version by the end. Well, then, I will give this episode credit for uh, building on something that we've done before. That's true. And uh, having a sense of continuity, because this show doesn't always have that, and it very easily could have been just more unrelated animal people. I like that. Um, I don't know why this show is, uh, you know, it has so many episodes with people turning into animal people. No, we do it a lot, and I think... One of the things that makes it more glaring... Okay, the Griffin cat's kind of cool. That is kind of cool. One thing that makes it more glaring is just that uh, we do so many in a row 
this show has this this weird these weird phases, right? Where these these stints where it's like we got to have several episodes, maybe not right in a row, but around each other. Where we've got animal people, we have another stint where it's uh, he, where it's uh, every villain we've seen before comes back and is trying to be legitimate. Like we do these these swaths of the same uh, you know you know story idea, and uh, it might be cool if we were like building on it thematically. But a lot of the time, it it, it really with this show sort of feels like just. This is these are the these are the uh, stories we feel like telling right now, and we do the same thing over and over again. Yeah, um, Brave and the Bold is something is another show that handled some of that stuff better because it didn't it had a continuity kind of, and it did a really good job of <laughs> yeah. um, transitioning to you episode to episode. So even if you haven't seen stuff that came beforehand, it still made perfect sense. So they they would do episodes where villains reform or they do animal people, and it all comes in a row. But it works because you you either see a character build or you see a different thematic layer to it each time. Um, there's a whole string of episodes with Batman and the Justice League International that are handled amazingly because they focus on different characters each time. Yeah, and that's a great idea for thematically building on it. Yeah, I mean, that that's... I think um, Batman Brave and the Bold is probably the best of the Batman shows. I, I mean, I like Beware the most, but I think Brave and the Bold is the only one that doesn't have a single bad episode. Wow. That's uh, that's quite a statement, Steve. And I've, I've not seen all that show, so I obviously I'm not going to make that statement. But I've seen the whole thing. That is bold. like three times, I think. I don't. I wow. can't find a single bad episode of that show. I tried to make a top ten list once, and it was just every episode in ascending order. Um, there's this violin sting in this episode that happens before nearly every commercial break, and it starts to get unintentionally funny. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas like. <laughs> And then you're like, yeah, uh, okay, okay, you did that already. <laughs> yeah. So look, it's Yellow Catwoman. Looks. Kind I think one of the things that makes this this so funny is that uh, these animal people look like they're just straight out of Ninja Turtles. Yeah, that's true. They look like somebody made these action figures and then put them in the show like Ninja Turtles. <laughs> I could see this being in like the 2003 show, actually. It kind of got that going. Um, the animation for the animal people is kind of odd because sometimes you see the fur and then other times it just looks like skin. Yeah, I was going to make the same point. It, that that absolutely cracks me up where it just looks like jagged skin. Yeah, and I mean, it'd be, it'd be okay in places, but they do it almost shot to shot. So like Catwoman looks like she's wearing, she has nothing but yellow skin. Then she turns her head and suddenly it's fur. Like it, it's Steve. Really weird. Steve, when when Batman and Tigress are are facing off and they start circling around each other, <laughs> why couldn't we have that music from the Ninja episode? Oh, that would have been fantastic. They they, they really should have done that. Oh, that would have been so much fun. <coughs> um, so the name of the episode comes from a poem, and the only reason I know that is because they do use the exact same poem for a Justice League episode later. Um, the opening line of the poem is Tiger, Tiger, so they named this episode Tiger, Tiger, and then the ending line of the poem is Fearful Symmetry, which they use for Justice League later. Oh, okay. And I don't, and the, the poem actually has, has nothing to do with this episode thematically whatsoever. It's no, just a cool title. Nothing. It, it works yeah, in Fearful Symmetry better than it does here. It's irritating because Batman, uh, is, is reading the, the is, well, reading, is, is, uh, is saying part of that poem at the end and uh, almost like it's he's he's tying up the ideas all together, and it doesn't sound like it means anything, and it feels like you know that an episode uh, doesn't really have a direct or a story in general doesn't really have much of a direction and much of a point of being when the person that writes it feels the need to throw in a literary reference just to make it seem smarter. Yeah, and that's absolutely what what we've got here. It's like, no, look, I've read something. Yeah, I mean, uh, it really how feels intelligent like they my saw show that is somewhere, and they said, "Hey, let's let's run with it." Well, but the problem is that's a poem I was familiar with, and I feel like a lot of kids probably read that in high school oh. and or school somewhere, and so it just it it feels kind of cheap because because it, it's uh it's like a first or second season TNG thing. Yeah, you know, there's that sting again. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're right, and part of the issue is just if you know anything whatsoever about the poem, then you know it doesn't fit with the episode, and it just makes the whole well, thing more jarring, even if you like the it's, episode. It's also ultra uh, uh, awkward, because first of all, that's not a tiger. Yeah. <laughs> just throwing that out there. 
Uh, secondly, I know it is spelled differently, but you took a male panther-looking guy and named it Tigris? <laughs> And that always was distracting to me, again, even as a kid, where I was like, Tigris? That's a guy cat! Yeah, like, what What was the point of that? I still don't understand that. the episode title. It's not a tiger! <laughs> Just make it a tiger! Why did it have to be a giant panther, man? It's it's not a tiger. And, and even if, if it was a tiger... What does it have to do with that? Okay, I'm going to pull up that t- that poem, and we're gonna we're gonna do something more interesting than this episode, oh, good. Steve. We're gonna we're gonna talk about that poem. Awesome. Okay, it's been forever since gonna, I read that. We're gonna talk about that poem. It's a fairly long poem too, and from what I understand, they only took like the first couple lines. Actually, I'm sorry, I don't have enough screens going on. Would you mind bringing that up real quick? Sure. Could, <laughs> thanks, Steve. The tiger. Would you like me to I read will... it or no? Um. Just scan it real quick and see if you can see anything in it that that uh that that would tell you why they felt the need to use that for this. Like, does it maybe have more to do with this episode than we're letting on? Um, I'm scanning it right is now. Is my question. <laughs> scan scanning scanning. <laughs> no, uh, no, it doesn't. No. <laughs> oh. This That's has hilarious. nothing to do with the episode. It's the, it doesn't even work on its own. This is a companion to another poem. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with this episode. I mean, you could maybe make the case that it's about disturbing nature, but not really. R- remind me who wrote that. Uh, it's William Blake. Blake, okay. Yeah. It actually makes a whole lot of sense now. That sounds like... Tiger, Tiger sounds like something he would say. Uh, no, it's got nothing to do with this episode. It would have worked better for on leather wings than it does here. They should have named this Panther Panther. <laughs> that would have been more fun. And this animation here looks really bad too. Like him trying to struggle, just uh, it's weird. Yeah, it's not great. I do like the line your father was was a test tube. <laughs> That's good. Although Batman has like no sympathy at all, like <laughs> it's kind of uncharacteristic given how much we've seen him care about just random people on the street in this series. Yeah, I mean, like this guy is the victim, right? I thought he was. Like, yeah, he's, but he's kind of evil now. because. Well, it, it, it tries to end with him not being that way, but I hear what you're saying. I, I, I mean, like, like he he is he was made in a laboratory, and he can't help what he is, and you know it. Like, like Batman should have a little bit more sympathy for him, I think. Probably so, yeah. You know, he's he's been raised and kind of programmed by this mad scientist, Cletus Cassidy guy. And... and I mean, part of it is just this episode's ignoring more interesting ethical questions about this whole situation. So Batman... No, that's true. I'm having a hard time even thinking about those or what they would be right now. But yeah. Um... I mean, there's a lot more than what we're seeing, basically. <laughs> like, it's... And that's why I don't like about cloning episodes, if anything, really, is that... There's the very generic message of should someone clone at all, but then you don't, you never play with the deeper things of like, for example, if you clone someone, does that clone now have those same rights as a person born in this country would? Yeah, exactly. Like no one right. talks and about stuff like that, but it's all and, there. And and again, with this guy, we should be we should be talking about that. Like like does does this guy even count as a person? Exactly like, because of the way he was, was built. He before and... who was the animal before? Where does any of that come from? Yeah, absolutely. Um, sure. We do that more with Langstrom than we do here, and he, Langstrom doesn't get a whole lot of that, even in, in like the two or three episodes he's in. I mean, you know, those are ideas that we've been playing with in the uh, IDW Ninja Turtle series, which is fascinating and fantastic. Where like, where like, you know, we take the mutates and we're like, you know, like with like old Hob, you know, he here's here's uh, this this uh, cat creature, but he remembers his life as a cat before, and a lot of his motivation comes from the way he was treated before he was mutated. That's really interesting. Yeah, and so so you see something like that, and you look at this, and and you and you wish that we were playing more with those identity issues. And uh, with, as you said, those rights issues. It's not just animal rights, it's human rights because they're both. Yeah, yeah I mean, a- animal rights and human rights and how they correlate with each other and why one's better than the other or why one isn't. Yeah. Um, or, yeah. Again, or it's just we- a slew of things. It's, it's kind of like hard. Or whether right. you should have more rights, j- 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 like, like, is it a foregone conclusion that if you're self aware and intelligent, 
that you know you deserve to be treated any better or differently than any than well differently that just is going to happen yeah. but 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 you know you, you know any 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 better than someone that than just an animal that doesn't right you know um no i mean it, it's and I, I can understand the episode not wanting to go too in depth just because it is partly a kid's show but at the same time don't make allusions to those ideas if you aren't going to explore them yeah, it's this. This episode is acting like it's much deeper and more thoughtful than it is, exactly. and uh, as you said, it's generic. Um, I cracked up when I when I was watching this before when Selena tells Tigris to search his feelings. <laughs> I I think that I. I, I think that Star Wars has the monopoly on that phrase and that nothing else should ever use it. Well, it's like having a conversation with someone and saying, who are you going to call? You just can't say that anymore. You can't. You yep, can't. There's, there's Some things become a tagline for a thing and you just can't use them anymore. It's not going to work. Yep. <laughs> also, uh, Tigris just has uh, uh killer croc's jaw right like yes. he, it's just he just has his he's killer croc in the face <laughs> i mean you can you can tell they probably recycled a lot of uh animation here i can't believe bruce tim was more mad about um joker's wild than he was about this one like this one looks worse yeah I, this is the point where Cletus Cassidy should become Carnage, right? Like, yes, this is totally just straight up like freak out. That that would have been the icing on the cake here is if is if they did that uh like that that cliche reveal where he's also been injecting himself and suddenly he turns into a giant amorphous monster creature. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like they should have done that. Yeah. Oh, uh, Batman! I I, I gotta I gotta tell you this episode, but I feel like it could have been really good. Everybody, look out, because uh, that's that stuff turns you into the Joker. <laughs> I don't usually say this about Kevin Conroy, but I don't like his line delivery when he yells "Tigress" because he, he's putting far too much emotion and weight into that line, and I don't feel anything about that character. And he clearly didn't, like thirty seconds ago. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good point. Um. I don't know how long this episode, like, uh, what the time scale is for something like this. Like, was was this, like, a thing that Bruce was dealing with for an entire day or a weekend or what? Um, oh, I thought you meant an animation. Like, did they spend a whole day on this episode? Well, no, no. They clearly spent a whole day on it. I think they might have. But, <laughs> but just in the context of the episode, because I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what Catwoman's relationship with him was, if anything at all. Yeah. Um, like, again, there's just so many more interesting stories within this story that never, never get talked about. No, that's a really good point. Uh, we're, because we feel like we have to focus on Batman, and even if you focus more on Batman, you could have made this more interesting, but uh, this should have been a romance, I think. I think it I thought it was a romance. I saying that, but I think to a degree it sort of did, but there's never even any more than just a hint that they sort of like each other or one like the other one or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, you know, Tigress obviously is interested in her cause she is a cute cat chick and she is the only person that's anything like him. And, and I mean, okay. It, so it just occurs to Selena, it just occurs to her that she's going to be stuck. Like, Oh, wait a minute. I'm a cat person. <laughs> and then here's oh, the, no. the pseudo relationship thing. Would it be so bad? Thing. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And I mean, it, oh. it doesn't really go anywhere. I don't understand who this character is at all aside from his name. So it doesn't, but I also don't understand enough about who Catwoman is, even yeah. having other episodes with her on top of this. Because the problem is, uh, what he says, why, why does he have that? I don't know. What, what he, I guess he, I guess he grabbed it intending to do that and having a big dramatic moment because he knew it was the end of the episode, Steve. But Why is she um, stopping? Like, if she's going to run after her, why did she stop? <laughs> stop! Hey, wait a minute! Hey, hey! Uh, but, but, but anyway, why, um... The problem is that his question is a really valid one for what little we get of Selena in this episode and anywhere anywhere else. Why why would it be so bad? She is, um, she seems to care almost more about cats than she does about people sometimes in this show. Wouldn't it have been much more interesting to have her consider staying a cat creature? Maybe have Batman have to talk her out of it for some reason. I mean, there's there's a hundred different different you know more interesting directions you could have gone with this, um, and make it make it almost like a subverted Beauty and the Beast story where it's like Beast and the Beast, like. Yeah. 
No, I mean, that, that could have worked beautifully. Um, and part of it is, I think, is the episode thinks it's doing that. Like, they think there's a little bit of a love triangle going on, but there's not enough attention in any general direction to make it work. Yeah, and I wouldn't even go as far as to say triangle, because, uh, like, like Batman doesn't even seem to be feel all that jealous toward, toward Tigris, unless, unless he's, uh, you know, treating Tigris that way because he's, because he's obviously a, a good potential suitor for yellow furry Catwoman. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, but yeah, um, I think it's important to mention that, uh, I, I, I don't think that our distaste for this episode is because of the premise necessarily. No, it's not that it's, it's just the way it's executed. Cause I mean, I, I always used to kind of think it was, I was always like, ah, it's a dumb idea, but I think I, I thought that cause, just cause of the way it's executed, like actually physically turning Catwoman into a cat person is, is a potentially really cool idea. Nothing is done with it. Yeah. Um, and then when we do more of this muta uh, mutated stuff later in this series and in this continuity, we still don't explore the same questions. Yeah, we never go very far with it. It's, it seems like it's just generically kind of like what, uh, you know, what, what they were, uh, what, what Tim Burton was thinking about with Batman Returns, yeah. where it's, well, we've got animals... We've got we, we we've got animal people because it's Batman, and so we have so we want to we want to explore the like primal instincts of people pretending to be animals. But again, we're not really doing very much with that. And I just feel like this is kind of doing that where it's like, oh, it's Batman, so let's have man bats and other things. And the difference is the man bat thing is kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, you can even go back to like. Clay, uh, Clayface, where that episode had yeah. the exact same problem, where it was more about, like, making something that's disturbing visually than it was about telling any kind of sympathetic story. Yeah, but at least it had that, right? I mean, at least it had that It had that atmosphere. It's and uh, I mean, it was handled yeah, a little bit better, but I mean, I, I think the general thought was still the same. Yeah, absolutely. Well, anyway, uh, everybody, thanks always for watching. Sure hope you enjoyed uh, our kind of kind of grilling uh, of Tiger, Tiger. Nobody buys. And... No one likes this episode. <laughs> <laughs> and we will see you again next week when we uh, watch, curiously, another person who turns into an animal story. Man of, what is it? Man, uh, man, man of, of the man wolf? Of the wolf I mean. Moon, moon of the wolf? Moon, moon of the wolf. Moon of the wolf, okay. Something of the wolf. Wolf in the fold. I don't know. Uh, anyway, so uh, yeah. So so next time a um, a werewolf story. Uh, I don't know why we gotta watch that right after this. But, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, but but we'll get enthusiastic somewhere between now and then. And in the meantime, I'm Captain Logan. I'm Steve Baxter. Thanks for watching.